online at consumerqb.com. And we're back. Welcome back to the Consumer Quarterback Show. I'm your host for the day, Alex Thema with Black Belt Fitness and Martial Arts, filling in for my man Brandon Rhymes, the Consumer Quarterback. Uh, per the usual, we have some uh, amazing guests in studio. We're about to have Sean Fabre of Fabre Frameworks uh, stepping up to the mic, and we also have some beautiful properties that we would like to feature from the Platinum MVP team. Uh, the properties that we have currently, we got this nice little commercial property right here. It is 2702 West Tampa Bay Boulevard here in Tampa in Hillsborough County. Uh, we're looking at uh, over 3,000 square feet. 3,126 square feet is a prime location on a huge corner lot. It's a nice little building right there. Uh, it's currently zoned for medical office use. I believe there are two tenants in it already, so this is an investment. Uh, someone goes and buys that property, you already have two people paying already in the building. Uh, lots of parking there. It's recently updated interior, and uh, it's with the two medical offices already in there. I can imagine it's a great uh, return of investment. So then we also have, let's see what other properties we have. Oh, this is a nice one. 907 Crenshaw Lake Road in Lutz, Hillsborough County. Uh, let's see, we have 2,425 square feet. This is a four bedroom, three and a half bath home, ranch style farmhouse on 3.16 acres. That's really nice. Open floor plan and natural lighting, large newly remodeled kitchen with stainless steel appliances and a huge backyard. I've always envisioned having like a big property like that that I can ride up four wheelers and shoot my guns off in, in the backyard. Sounds like fun, right, Sean? Yeah, it does. Yeah, man. <laughs> Let's see. We'll go half seas. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. All right. Uh, all of our properties you can see at platinummvpteam.kw.com. All right, and in studio we have Sean Fabre for Bray Frameworks. How's it going, Sean? It's going good. How about yourself, Alex? Not too bad, my man. So uh, I must say I'm always impressed when I uh, look at the uh, the shots you guys do. Man, you really do have a, a, an eye for when you guys go out and take the pictures and stuff. Because I've seen the compare, I've seen the comps, I've seen what other people look like when they're taking pictures, and there's a significant difference when it's you guys doing it. Yeah, man, it blows me away also because some realtors don't use real estate photography. They kind of just go to the house themselves they pull out their iphone and start taking photos upload it i mean that kind of just goes to show what some realtors think about their listings and how they show a lack of uh, professionalism to their clients i mean are they going to get more clients because they're not using professional real estate photography of course not so i think that's a key when it comes to uh, presenting our clients with the best product we can provide so they look good to the sellers of the home I agree. I agree. I've seen some of those pictures myself because I, I do uh, I do some of the edits for some of the real estate properties and uh, and I can just automatically tell I'm like oh this is a for Bray Frameworks one for sure yeah that's... and then I'll see I'll, I'll see somebody else's and I'll be like yeah they did this with a camera phone yeah. or, you know or they didn't take the time they didn't even bother to get like make sure the cat wasn't in the picture exactly. running running across yeah. the room a blurred photo or something yeah, like that like toilet bowls that are open and. You know, exactly trash all over the place yeah it's 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 wild so how, how did you uh i don't think I, I you know i know i know what you do and i know you've got been doing it for a while how did you initially get into doing like the, the real estate photography so i was a civil engineer and that's what i was going to school for i was like six credits away from getting my bachelor's and i was working for a civil engineering company i was there for 11 years so from when i was 16 all the way up until i was like 26 so like 10 years and uh, it just got to the point where I don't want to sit behind a computer all day and look at blue light. It's just horrible for your eyes. I wear contacts, you know, so my vision is destroyed. So I started making motivational videos. And I paid my friend to make a video for me, and he charged me like 300 bucks. I was like, I could do this myself. So then I bought a camera, bought a lens, and I started making motivational videos myself. They weren't that good. Uh, the message was good, but the video itself, the quality of the video was not good. Um, so then I started researching things on um, YouTube to see how to edit better and how to, you know, form pictures in a certain way to to make it look the best for the video. And then I got tired of doing that in like a month. And then after that, I started going to downtown Tampa and taking photos just for fun. And uh, uh, a photographer that was here in Tampa, his name's John Weatherby. I saw his photos and I wanted my photos to be like mm. that. So I just kept shooting, shooting, shooting. One day I run into a homeless man and he starts talking to me about photography. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I didn't know he was homeless at the time. Sure, sure. But you could kind of tell. Right. And he started, you know, showing me how to use the camera. And he was used to like flash bulbs and long exposures without the automatic settings. And he taught me everything in like literally one hour. So from there, it was just off to the races. So then I started taking good photos. I started editing well. 
And my brother-in-law, who's a broker, looks at the photos. He saw my parents' house, and he was like, bro, come over. Take photos of the house. I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to be a famous photographer, right, blah, right. blah, blah. Yeah. And uh, I take the photos. I edit them. And he posts them online. He's like, dude, you should be doing this all day. Yeah. So his his brother uh, saw the photos, hires me to photograph a duplex, took me 30 minutes, and I made 200 bucks. I was like, that's it. There's I'm, something I'm here. I'm quitting real estate. <laughs> or I'm sorry, I'm quitting civil engineering because if I can make $200 in 30 minutes, yeah. I should be doing as many houses as I can per day. So then about three months go by, I quit my job. I get too busy. I call my brother, who was also in civil engineering. I was like, bro, move back to Tampa because he was living in Orlando. Yeah. And uh, let's start knocking these homes out together. So then, you know, from there, you know, we – now we co-own the business yeah and um we read a, a ton of books started hiring employees and now we where we're, we're at right now what's the time span on that so some from when you went to take in like you started doing the videos Bro, it and was then you like did some... five months yeah it was five months it was crazy how quickly it happened yeah and, and like i remember the day i walk into my boss's office and i i say hey man because i've done this thing before i'd go get job offers and say hey Pay me or I leave. Right, right. He always paid. Sure, sure, <laughs> so, sure. Right. So this time I was like, I'm not coming over here, you know, with any kind of contract for any other civil engineering company. I'm just telling you that I'm leaving in two weeks to pursue this. And he was like, are you sure you want to do that? How about if you work, you know, three days a week here and, and then, you know, you do that on the other days? And I was like looking at my bills. I was like, okay, well, you know, three days a week, that's enough to support just my, my main bills and everything I'm making real estate photography I could keep. And, um. You know, that lasted about a week, and then I was like, no, there's too much money to be made here. I, I can't do it anymore. He was like, man, I knew I knew it was going to happen. I just didn't think it was going to happen that soon. But, yeah, from from when I bought a camera to when Fabray Frameworks happened, it was just like five months. And that's when uh, me and my brother were doing it full time. And then after, say, about six more months go by, then that's, you know, the, the time frame in which we were reading all the books and everything. Yeah. That's when we just hired an editing team, hired more photographers, and you know started to work on the business instead of in the business. There you go. So with drive, hustle, and the ability to self-educate, and you have a vision, you can make things happen. I yeah, love that, man. It, I love stories like it, that. It takes a lot of work, though, man. I'm, I'm saying like what we were doing, we were waking up, 6 a.m., one of us would have to drive to Orlando, yeah. come back, and then edit the photos up until like 2 a.m. and deliver them. That's it, man. Nothing comes to those that sleep but dreams. That's so you got to wake up and hustle, man. I'm that's telling you. True. Uh, Sean, always a pleasure, man. How can people reach you, buddy? Uh, 813-906-8300 or FabrayFrameworks.com. And uh, we just came out with an app, so you can download our app from the App Store. It's nice, nice. We're going to we're gonna hear more about that next time you're on the show. Absolutely. My man, always a pleasure. Uh, blessed to know you and meet you once again. Uh, coming up next, we got another... Uh, we got a mortgage lender coming on the show. He's going to drop some knowledge on the Bay Area and how to get finance. Coming up next on ConsumerQB.com. Hey, everybody. It's the captain, Matt Bruce, and you're listening to my buddy, Brandon Rimes, a consumer quarterback. Sell, Brandon, sell. Yeah. <laughs>